Water privatization, selling off to private companies, has been what a lot of cities have done. It's a great resource, they can get some money in, they don't have to pay for um, maintenance, they can get off the hook for responsibility. Are you advocating that at this point for what's, what's going on in Newark? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Like it's so, it's so honorable that Newark still owns its own water, right? In a city like Newark where people are often calling us very marginalized and you know, don't drive there at night, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. It's really great that we still have that resource, you know, but we just really do need better oversight. You know, because this problem, it dates back to, you know, the 80s, the 50s, if you will. You know, but at that time, maintenance was being done, right? There wasn't as much negligence. People were not as asleep at the wheel, whereas we're having this elevated levels of lead in the water. So if we could just have people, scientists, right, engineers, people who are qualified, experts, to handle something as sensitive as water, right? Because it's not infrastructure. Water is not just infrastructure. Water is you have to have a good relationship with it. It's life, you know, it, it's its own resource mm. before it goes through those pipes. And we need people who understand that, you know, and, and if we could have that kind of oversight, then we, we trust whatever administration to do the work as long as you're doing the work. Mm. Now, you mentioned the 1950s. The other thing we had in those Eisenhower years was a high level of taxation on people with a lot of money. There were more resources mm. in public hands for maintenance. Right. I mean, do you have any sympathy for the city managers who say, we're doing a, we have to do a whole lot with a whole lot less? Well, it's hard to and have- nobody wants us to raise taxes. Well, it's hard to have that sympathy when this past January, they all got $50,000 raises. $50,000. And so what we look, you know, I'm a, definitely a big numbers person. So when I look at the city budget and over, you know, 50% of that is for police and fire, and not for infrastructure. When you have a problem, then it's a, it's a real issue. It's like, where are you allocating your resources? What are you doing with this? So I think, you know, I think the resources are there. I just think they're being misappropriated or they don't know how to manage it. And there's like a lot of nepotism there. So those would be my criticisms. And I definitely would be, you know, against privatization because water is a human right. You know, it shouldn't be a for-profit system. And even the private companies are still having this issue. We see mm -hmm. Bergen County, uh, American Water Company, uh, Suez, they're, they're still having lead issues. So it's, they're, but those people pay even more for their yeah. water. So I mean, the like, trend nationally and certainly internationally is to re-municipalize, yeah. take out of private hands, put back in public right. hands, but do it differently. Um, I want to get to how you would like to see it done differently. But before that, while we're talking about authority, there is a federal act that is supported by, among others, Brenda Lawrence from Michigan and, and Bernie Sanders. I think it's called the Water, the Act, Water Act, Affordability, Transparency, mm -hmm. yeah. Equity, mm -hmm. and Reliability. <laughs> um, is there a place for federal government intervention in all of this and the passage of that act? I think it's important for regulation. I think that legislation that says, hey, you must test the schools every year and put that information out online so that people in the community and parents know what's going on. I think that is important because it makes it easier for citizens, for activists to be like, hey, this is a problem and listen, someone else already said that this is what should be going on and it's not going on. So I think legislation, I think the federal government has a place there, right? But aside from that, Anthony? <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want just federal hands coming in. We, we just want more eyes on it, oversight. So I think speaking to legislation goes very far. And so we can hold people accountable to something that's already there. And then I think the second part of it is dollars, right? Because you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars to repair these infrastructures. Right. So again, placing this money, um, I always talk about how when Amazon had the potential to come to Newark, it was a $5 billion tax credit, three from the state and then two from, from the city of Newark. So we have the money, you have the money, you can do it in, in different ways. But again, that federal money makes things a lot easier. Not just to put bash on, put, push back on that a tiny bit, they would say, but that credit is only realized as yeah. jobs are created. It's not like it's sitting there, just a detail, but yeah. your point is there. What do you do next? And are you working actively with people in Flint and other parts of the country? So some activists have reached out from Flint and we've partnered with them a lot especially with uh, best practices. Um, so what we're doing a water distribution, they told us, hey, that's a lot of heavy lifting, gave us some tips. It's been really, it's like a really, when you talk about solidarity, you really feel that, especially coming from Flint, because they dealt with this issue before. So in bringing up with Newark, 
you can all and they're still fighting the same fight so it's it's great to work with that together and then you have cities around the area you know elizabeth bloomfield belleville that are also experiencing some issues that are working with us as well so you see a community building it's it's a shame that we have to rally around this cause and this effort but at the same time you get that that hope again in humanity right you think you'll, turn, you'll end up different yeah a thousand percent. I mean, Newark sells its water to 20, 22 other, other cities. And so a lot of those cities are getting hit really quickly and they want to get testing for their water because they're like, hey, if Newark's having this problem, we get, you know, anywhere from 10 to 50 percent of our water from there. How are we affected? You know, so it's, it's growing. It's definitely growing. And people's concern is growing, especially parents and teachers. Parents and teachers are, I think, the most concerned because they're seeing a change in the children. You know, we had a teacher come to our meeting and say, I've never seen so many kids with, an, with IEPs, you know, like. What's that? So it's in like education programs for in class. And they have a specific program that they need to have for these children because they're having inability, um, sitting still, uh, mental fog, inability to focus, stuff like that. And those are directly correlated to elevated levels of lead, like aggression is. Yeah. You know, and so parents and teachers are noticing this change. You know, I've been teaching 30 years in the school district and these past few years have been, you know, strange. And so it's definitely catching fire. So what can people do? What can people do, A, to look after themselves, B, to reach out or help you, be in allyship with you, mm. um, C, to maybe lift up these issues nationally in the national debate? We are in an election year. So we have a website, NorcWaterCoalition.com. You can find us um, on Facebook, Newark Water Coalition, and Instagram, Clean Water, number four for Newark. Um, but get involved. One of the things I always tell people is it's not enough to have the information for yourself. You have it, tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Like, you really just have to be active in the community. People power is the only way to win this. And the only way to do that is to educate, you know, people around you. And we're still seeing people don't, not realizing there's a crisis. So the more people and eyes that we have on this issue, the more we can hold people accountable, the more we can move around resources, and the more we can really activate the population of Newark. You said something beautiful earlier on that you felt proud that Newark owns its water. Were you aware that Newark owned its water before all this happened? And can you talk a little bit more about that sense of pride about it and, and what it might change if more people understood that and felt that? So I'm going to try to carefully put this together. Uh, so when Cory Booker was our mayor, um, there was talks of privatization and fighting against it or lobbying for it. And there were some issues around the Newark watershed and, and things like that. And so I think when that kind of, you know, any kind of uh, rumors in the city get around quickly, I'm like, oh, so we own our own water and we're fighting against that. Wow, that's really cool that a city like Newark still has that. Um, and it's really, I mean, we have beautiful people and great food and the businesses are flourishing, but owning your own water, it's like one of the last things that we have to really stand out as a city like ours, right? And I say city like ours very cheekily because I hope people get what I'm saying. Um, but I think that that's so important. And, and if we just get steamrolled by corporations because downtown Newark is already looking very gentrified and it's moving up the avenues. If we don't have our water anymore, Newark is not the Newark I know. I'm born and raised and it's not gonna be the same, right? And so if we hold on to that, you know, maybe we can hold on to the culture there. You feel the same way? I 100,000% agree.